put John's name on this slide because he uh, contributed to this work. Um, and yeah, I just wanted to make sure everyone would take me really seriously. So that was part of the intro. <laughs> um, but this is some work that I'm pretty excited about. Um, it was funded by our um, work with the DARPA Robotics Challenge um, to improve simulation. And the main thing is um, integrating multiple physics engines into Gazebo and comparing them and um, seeing what comes out. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the DARPA Robotics Challenge because it has probably our coolest videos. Um, and then give a little overview of Gazebo. I'll talk about the physics engines that we have. Um, and then I'll show some benchmark um, testing to compare them. So the DARPA Robotics Challenge is, uh, many of you are familiar with it, it's a goal to um, improve disaster response capabilities for robotics. And OSRF played an important role in this competition uh, through the Virtual Robotics Challenge, which was interesting. It was a, a software-based challenge um, to identify um, teams that could write good robot control software. Um, and there were three tasks uh, aimed at um, skills related to firefighting, um, driving a small utility vehicle, walking on uneven terrain, and picking up a fire hose. Um, this is uh, one of the videos. So this is, a, um, this is a rendition of one of the team's approach to this type of obstacle course. And it's important to note that this um, this rendering was created um, after the fact from a, a log file and that they didn't have access to this view. They just had, they had more of an RVIS view, which was just the sensors available to the robot. And then they did um, eyes off teleoperation, um, which is pretty impressive. Um, this is that fire hose task that I was interpreting earlier. Um, and after this is the, to really test uh, manipulation. And this, this robot that uh, we're simulating is, the Boston, is a Boston Dynamics humanoid robot called Atlas. Um, and it's shown here with um, Sandia hands, um, or s some hands made by Sandia National Lab. Um, and then the, the driving task. This is kind of taking robot driving to a new meta level. Um, and I was kind of, when I first heard it, I wasn't sure you know, why would they would choose this? Why not use an autonomous vehicle? But in a pinch, if there's, you know, a fire and you need to get a water truck there, you can't say, oh, well, let's just use an autonomous water truck, or, you know, if you don't have one. Um, so it's about making use of um, resources that you already have. And then this is showing some results from the, the trials um, when um, last December teams demonstrated some of their capabilities. And the finals would be in June. Um, and so for the virtual robotics challenge, um, Gazebo was used um, to simulate the, um, the, the whole task. And the goal for Gazebo is to be the best uh, possible substitute for an actual robot. We have physics, sensors, interfaces, especially um, a ROS interface, and graphical tools. I'm going to talk uh, today primarily about physics. And um, an exciting thing, uh, during the, for the virtual robotics challenge and throughout the history of Gazebo, um, it's, it's used uh, Open Dynamics Engine. Um, but recently, we've incorporated three other open source physics engines that come from uh, you know, different pedigrees. They do um, some things different than others. Some of them emphasize. So um, Bullet, for example, is used a lot in gaming and animation. Uh, SimBody has been used extensively in biomechanics, so it has a more, um, it's, and it's been validated in a number of cases, so it has a more scientific pedigree. And Dart is kind of a mix. It has, um, it's, it's being used in serious robotics, but it's also been used for animation, so they have a good eye for um, real-time performance. I'm just gonna, oh, and the, the really cool thing is that it's, it's very easy to switch between physics engines. I get, I gave this talk at ASME a couple weeks ago, and at, after the talk they said, okay, but which physics engine is the best, and um, which one should I use? Um, 
And I don't, I think if you use Gazebo, you can switch between them very easily. So it's not really about choosing one or the other. It's about you know, being able to easily try out different ones. Um, as of Gazebo 3.0, um, you can just use a command line argument to specify which physics engine you want to use, or you can specify in a Gazebo world file that for this simulation, I prefer ODE or um, SimBody or whatever. And we just re released Gazebo 4, which includes support for ODE, Bullet, and SimBody um, in the devs. Uh, one uh, thing that we're working on is uh, currently you need the physics engine, um, at the physics engines that are going to be available are determined at build time. So if you build Gazebo and then install Bullet, it won't um, be able to work. You'll have to rebuild uh, Gazebo for that. So, um, so currently, if you install the Gazebo 4 devs, you'll get those three physics engines. If you want to use Dart, um, then you'll need to build from source. Um, and if you want to try out these dev, if you want to try out these packages, if you have the OSR Foundation package um, installation set up, it's on our wiki, then you can install the ROS, and ROS distro Gazebo 4 ROS packages. Um, now, um, I'm just going to describe some of the differences between these physics engines. Um, one of them is how they represent coordinates. Um, and the two ways are with maximal coordinates and generalized coordinates. Now, if you're not familiar with those, I'll, I'll explain that. Maximal coordinates um, is used, it's used by ODE and Bullet. And what they do is they, for each rigid body, they give it six degrees of freedom. And then for any articulation, constraints or joints that you place on those rigid bodies, they add um, constraints to be solved. So it's like a DAE. Um, so for example, this double pendulum would have 12 degrees of freedom. It would have a sparse 12 by 12 mass matrix. And it would have 10 constraints that you need to solve. Uh, generalized coordinates, on the other hand, um, they, they try to, they don't, they choose a different, so um, so in this case, they would, they would choose theta 1 and theta 2. They look at the, um, the definition of joints in the system and define the degrees of freedom based on that. And so you would have, in this case, a dense 2 by 2 mass matrix with no constraints. So your, um, your kinematics are implicit. Um, they're more accurate. You don't need a constraint solver um, to get that. Uh, another difference is how they um, model um, spring and dampers, um, and uh, this is kind of, um, you know, people are looking at their phones right now, which is fine, but it's, it's, Im it's, <laughs> it's important because one of the physics engine blows, one of the physics engines blows up because of um, how it models this. Um, the explicit form uses the position and velocity, basically the states from the current time step to compute the next velocity, whereas if you use an implicit numerical formulation, you you, comp you say, I want the next velocity to de be, de um, use the, or compute the force based on the next time step um, states. Um, explicit is easier to compute and easier to explain. <laughs> I tripped over that a little bit. But implicit is more numerically stable, so, and um, we'll see that in some of the plots. This is just a summary of um, a number of features. Um, as I said, ODE and Bullet use maximal coordinates. Dart and SimBody use generalized coordinates. Um, three of the physics, and three of them use the implicit spring damper formulation, whereas Bullet is using explicit. And then, and also three of the physics engines are using just a pure rigid contact formulation. Um, and I guess, I should qualify that by saying, um, and, and I say that SimBody is compliant. That doesn't mean it's you doing using soft bodies, um, but um, it's using uh, forces based on penetration to resolve contact, whereas Dart, OD, and Bullet are using constraints. Um, again, you know, looking at your phones, it's fine. Um, and so, you know, okay, great. We have four physics engines. You can choose between them, but how do we? How do we say which one's better? We've, 
I've, we've heard a lot of opinions about which one's better. Oh, you know, OD is fast, but it sucks, you know. Um, but in order to, you know, be scientific about this, um, I've, I've come up with some benchmark tests. Um, and so a benchmark, um, as I'm defining it, includes a model, initial conditions, any disturbances that are going to be applied, any control inputs, and also what do you expect the behavior to be? Do you expect it to follow a particular trajectory? Is it going to conserve energy, um, et cetera? And then each solver has um, a number of parameters. Um, it's actually quite intimidating with, uh, to look at that space. But um, so in order to compare performance, you should vary some of them um, to see, see what happens. And, and then you want to you know, take measurements on what happened. Was it, you, you can measure accuracy and computational speed. Those are the two types of metrics I'm looking at. And then you also, in, um, there's quite a range in complexity in how you set up your benchmarks. Um, what I'm gonna present today is three relatively simple models with known solutions, and then one of um, a robot, of the Atlas robot walking, which we don't have an exact solution for what all of the joint states should be throughout that trajectory. Um, but it's, um, it's a more realistic um, example. So the first benchmark is free-floating rigid bodies. There's no contact, there's no multi-body, um, there's no joints. Um, it's in a constant gravity field. And I set the initial conditions so that the largest angular velocity um, this is a one by four by nine uh, box, and so I set the largest angular velocity about the, the middle, uh, the axis of length four. Um, and this particular set of initial conditions leads to tumbling, which you can see in the video. Um, I think it's fascinating, but um, if you, I can tell, tell you about why it leads to tumbling after this talk. Um, and so, and the expected behavior of this is that the center of mass should follow a parabolic trajectory, and angular momentum should be conserved in the world frame. Um, to test this, I varied, the parameters I varied were the, the time step size, and also the number of boxes in the simulation. Not to see if they had different, the accuracy didn't depend on the number of boxes, just the speed. Um, and then I have three plots here. Uh, one of them, so on the, on the, the bottom left is showing the, the center of mass position error um, on the y-axis, and on the x-axis is the time step size, and this is a log, log scale on the y-axis. Um, and each, uh, so, so they're the letter of the, yeah, so DART has a D, OD has an O, and somebody has an S. Um, you know, when I first came up with this benchmark, I thought, you know, this is the simplest one, they'll all be the same, and I'll just use this to make sure that my code is set up properly. But there are actually some differences. Um, Dart, uh, OD and Bullet are about the same. SimBody is slightly better just because of its uh, solver tolerances. Um, but Dart was an order of magnitude worse, and so I reported it to the Dart developers, and they looked into it, and they, um, they think that it's because they're storing the, um, the velocity vector components in a body fixed frame internally. And so when they want to integrate that to compute position, they have to rotate it back to the world frame and then integrate. And so any error in your rotation leads to error in your linear velocity, um, which was kind of surprising. And they're, um, they're working to fix it. So it, the goal of this is not to say who's, you know, who's best and who's worse. It's about um, learning from each other. This, uh, this middle plot is showing angular momentum error on the y-axis and um, what I'm calling time ratio. So it's the ratio of uh, how long it took to compute the simulation versus how, much simula how, how long the simulation was. So 1.0 is real time. A lar as it gets larger, that's slower than real time. As it gets smaller, it's faster than real time. And you can see that the, there's this trade-off between computational speed and accuracy. And 
the, the physics engines all kind of fall in a similar band. Um, and again, each point has, what I'm varying here is the time step, and, um, and that leads to the differences in these, the, leads to the differences in um, sim computational time. But it's interesting because they all kind of fall in this band. So, um, and then on the bottom right, I vary the number of boxes and then sh show the computational time. And they, ODE bullet and SimBody are roughly linear in the number of boxes, but um, Dart has this kind of quadratic um, relation. And I reported that to them as well, and they're, uh, they're, gonna, they're working on it. But you don't notice, you don't know these things unless you do these kind of tests, so. Um, the second benchmark is um, a simple mass spring oscillator. It has a prismatic joint connecting a rigid body to the world. There's no, no damping, just a spring force. Um, additionally, just to try to stir up the pot, I apply a disturbance torque to the box. Um, uh, and then my, I expect a sinusoidal trajectory and no angular deviation. Um, because it, the prismatic joint should constrain the angle of the box. I vary the solver time step size again. I also vary the number of ODE constraint solver iterations. Um, and bullet has it, parameters as well, but just for the sake of time and complexity, I just varied one for ODE. And then the performance metrics here are position error from the deviation from the sinusoid and angular error. And this is where the explicit, um, the, the explicit spring damper formulation um, is unstable. Hmm? Oh. Oh, did I, I jump to, okay, sorry. So the, the explicit spring damper formulation from the, the previous slide, um, it's unstable for large time steps. Um, and it just blows up. And there's, there might be something interesting down here, but this is mainly just to say, well, um, you know, be careful with your time step if you have an explicit spring damper formulation. This, this plot on the bottom right is showing the, the error in the, the angle. And this is basically, um, the difference between using generalized and maximal coordinates. Um, ODE, or SimBody and Dart, they're, they have, you know, machine, ze or machine zero level of error because they, um, the kinematics are implicit in their formulation. And then ODE, uh, this number represents the number of uh, solver iterations, so five, uh, 10, 20, et cetera. And, um, Depending on the number of iterations you use, you'll have different levels of constraint error. Um, this is, and then the, the last um, test was a, a stack, a box stack, and I varied the inertia of the top box. And basically, if you make that box really heavy, much heavier than the boxes below, it'll fall over, which is um, when this error saturates right here. Um, and, and also, this is a, a rough estimate, or not estimate, but a rough measurement of the simulation time ratio for each physics engine. OD and Bullet are the fastest. Um, Dart is um, about half as fast, and then SimBody is very slow because of the compliant contact model. And the, um, the parameters that we used in this test were very stiff, and it uses variable time steps to um, when it when there's stiff parameters, so S use very small time steps, and then so those are the those are the simple benchmarks. Now I'm going to jump to a complex benchmark, which is the robot walking, which I demoed for you earlier. Um, this is the Atlas with the black box Boston Dynamics walking controller, um, and I'm showing them in order of fastest to slowest. So Dart, despite the other issues that we found. It's able to make Atlas walk the fastest. ODE is close if you use a small number of iterations, but it falls over, which is suboptimal. <laughs> um, so that was, uh, 
So yeah, less than rough 40 iterations is kind of what you need to keep it walking steadily. Uh, we used 50 iterations during the, the VRC. You can use more iterations and it'll go slower. Um, bullet, um, this is the explicit um, spring damper formulation again. So, so then I just reduced the time step by five. Um, and it takes a few steps and kind of, it looks, it's slow motion because it's running slower because I made the time step smaller. Um, and if you make it, if you reduce it by a factor of 10, then for these conditions, it happens to, to work fine. Um, then SimBody is very slow because of its contact model. Um, and then this is going to superimpose um, the trajectory computed from each physics engine. And it looks like there's one blurry atlas walking. And any of the blur is when they're deviating from each other. But the kind of hand wavy thing is that, hey, they're not that blurry. They're pretty close. You know, In the absence of um, experimental validation data, this is, you know, it, it would be disconcerting if they were very different. But the fact that they're close is saying there's no red flags. That's a conservative statement, I guess. But, um, and then this is a, a plot of the let, left foot trajectory in the sagittal plane. Also, they're pretty close. And then this is showing the computational speed where um, it's faster to the right, slower to the left, and then more error as you increase on the y-axis. And then this is different numbers of ODE iterations. And there's kind of a plateau where the difference between 100 and 200 iterations, it doesn't improve your accuracy substantially. It makes it go slower. And then just a recap of how these physics engine features affected um, the robot walking. SimBody went slowest, or was, you had to take small time steps because of its contact model. Bullet, the explicit, um, Spring damper made you take small time steps. And then ODE, because of the maximal coordinates, you have to play with the iterations to get the right level of accuracy. Um, and so this is a, you know, a continuing project. Um, we'd like to test more solver parameters, but that's you know, a factorial type of thing. So that's you know, maybe cloud sim for that. Um, we don't, and I'd like to add some benchmarks that are kind of intermediate complexity, not like uh, kind of in between what I showed um, today. And then maybe some common data formats if people want to reproduce these benchmarks outside Gazebo. Um, if, and also a plug-in architecture for Gazebo so you don't, it doesn't, um, so it doesn't, what you have at build time doesn't determine what physics engines you can use. And then um, also validation. So thank you for your attention, um, and thank you to our sponsors, and I'll take any questions now. That's a goal. Yep. So the question was whether any engines are suitable for GPU computation. So um, we're currently using the Bullet 2 API. Um, Bullet 3, which has not been released yet, but is on GitHub, has extensive support for GPU optimizations. Um, and so that is a, um, so yes, um, and we're planning to look into bullet three. One thing I've heard kind of anecdotally from people who do GPU things is that there's a minimum problem size for it to be worth it. Um, you know, it might be thousands of objects. So for a single robot in a relatively simple scene, um, you might be better off just using CPU, but that's anecdotal. Yep, one more.
comments on? Um, he, so this uh, question was about, there's some physical phenomena that can't be described using rigid body um, contact. You might need uh, you know, more deformable um, body modeling. And actually, Dart and Bullet both have deformable um, uh, body support. Um, we haven't in integrated it yet, but um, I, I agree that this, this doesn't cover every um, situation, but um, I think it covers quite a bit that we are interested in. And we'll add more features as, as need arises. Thank you.